take 18 action. Right. Hi. Hello. Uh, welcome to another Blender tutorial by Ventury Productions. And today, or rather tonight, I'm going to be doing uh, shattering text objects. And this was an idea inspired by uh, uh, the YouTube channel Shattered Gaming UK. A couple of weeks ago, the, the guy who... Um, you know, admins a YouTube page, Alex. You, you'll have seen him on uh, a few of my videos, hopefully. If not, he's on um, Bad on N music video and Alex dances and uh, Seeing Double. He's a star of that. Clones himself. Um, that's quite a funny one. Uh, anyways, he came around to my house a couple of weeks ago uh, with with Blender. He introduced me to Blender that week, so that was a very exciting visit for me. And uh, he wanted to create an ident for Shattered Gaming, but he couldn't figure out how to do this here, uh, which is basically shatter text objects in Blender, uh, because it works a little bit differently to shattering mesh objects, but I'll get to that in a moment. So we settled for After Effects, I uh, used uh, Pixel Poly to just shatter a 2G, t sorry, 2D text object, uh, and it wasn't quite as amazing as this has a potential to be, so um, let's get on to showing you how amazing this has the potential to be. Okay, so file, new, reload, startup file. Okay, so I've done some changes here, you'll notice, uh, if you've seen my other two tutorials. Um, I'm in cycles now by default, because I really don't like Blender Render. So uh, anyways, just get rid of those two objects, and then Shift A to add a new text object. Rotate by the X, 90, scale it up. Um, Go into the uh, the F panel here. That stands for text object data. Uh, scroll down here into paragraph and click center, and that is our starting point. And to edit what the text says, you go into edit mode. Uh, for meshes, this is uh, where you move around vertex, but um, or vertices or whatever. But for text, edit mode is where you can go crazy with typing but I'm not going to have that many letters. I'm just going to settle for, you know, that same nice warm welcome message that we had earlier. Hi. And just scale that up a bit. And at the moment, you'll notice that's 2D. But that's because we haven't extruded it yet. So we'll just go into the geometry panel here and extrude it by, I think, 0 0.05 works best. And that looks pretty good. And then we'll just go into the bevel over here, the depth, and change that to 0 0.02. Yeah, this looks good also. Okay. We'll just move it up. So, uh, within seconds, we've created uh, our text object. And where Alex, uh, the guy from Shattered Gaming, got stuck was uh, to do these fracture things, you have to go into File. Uh, user preferences, this is just a thing to do before you try and fracture anything. Go into add-ons, go down to object, and make sure you have object fracture tools turned on. Uh, if you don't have that turned on, you can't do this sort of thing. But um, with a mesh, you would uh, hit spacebar, type in fracture, click fracture object, um, choose your number of shards, say 15, um, and execute. And that's going to shatter it. However, here you'll notice that absolutely nothing has happened, seeing as the entire thing is still one massive object. And if we just test this by going into the game, the uh, the game engine, the game render, let's see, Blender game, that's what it's called. Uh, we'll go into the game engine by hitting P, where uh, animations are carried out. You can see there is nothing there but a simple high. Uh, it's very 2D. Uh, there is absolutely no shattering of any sort going on, and that's because this is a text object. And even if you go into edit mode, and then go into, sorry, not edit mode, wireframe mode, you can see there are vertices. Um, those are actually, they're more like illusions. They're not actual vertices that you can manipulate yourself. And to create them, or convert them into vertices that you can manipulate yourself, and therefore fracture, we can hit spacebar, type in convert this is the keyest moment the most important part of this tutorial 
convert to mesh from text boom done we no longer have a text object we have a mesh object how awesome is that now we can go space type in fracture click fracture object and execute and you notice that something has actually happened because uh, only that little bevel ring there is selected it's its own object now we basically took the big object which we created and then we almost instantaneously after its creation split it into lots of tiny pieces and uh, here is one of those pieces you can just move it around there but uh, yeah, just undo that uh, if we go into uh, wireframe mode though where you can see the pieces in more detail there isn't actually that much to look at so uh, what we need to do here is just click on all the main parts and refracture them to try and uh, you know make things a little bit more interesting so clicking just clicking on the uh, the bulk of the dot of the eye there and hitting space clicking on fracture object which is already there because I already typed it in uh, turn up the number of shards to about 20 if you're feeling lucky and hit execute and hope that blender doesn't crash yay it didn't crash and if we go into wireframe you'll see now that there's a horrible mess of uh, wireframes and that means that uh, it's successfully fractured there is um, lots of different pieces making up that one big piece now and that's exactly what we're looking for so we'll just do that with all the other pieces as well just to um, so when we get around to fracturing things will actually look a little bit more interesting uh, that did nothing we'll just give that give that another shot um, yeah sometimes that just happens and it doesn't mean that there's no fractures it just means that it it's kind of shaving them vertically and uh, you'll see that later there's going to be loads and loads and loads of vertical layers and we'll just try with the bulk of the H here to fracture that no guarantees execute hey we've actually got some uh, fracturing going on here okay so just coming out of wireframe mode uh, this all looks fine and dandy uh, just go back into the blender game engine animation thing hit P for that and you know even though it's fractured there is still nothing happening and that's because we have to hit B actually go back into wireframe mode and that's Z by the way I didn't say that before but I should have then hit B which is a kind of select tool and just click and drag and uh, all parts will be selected and the reason I went into wireframe mode for this was uh, it works visually so if I just unclick I go into uh, not wireframe mode i.e. solid mode and click I will not uh, have selected all the okay well that completely didn't work for me but sometimes most often that is the case that if you use the the B select tool it'll only select what you can see and what you can't will not be selected but anyway we appear to have everything selected here so uh, we'll just hit space type in fracture one last time but this time we're not going to hit fracture object we're going to hit on uh, set up fracture shards and uh, that's going to make all these circles appear and that means that our fracture shards are now active and to um, just show you what that actually means hit P boom my that was interesting so uh, that is essentially our fracture going on right there it's kind of like a, a self-contained explosion with some really weird physics things going on okay uh, just a side note if you want to if you don't want the text to explode until something hits it you're gonna have to do something in the logic editor which uh, I don't think I'll show you today because it's not really necessary to what I'm trying to do here which is just shadow text so uh, I'll just show you what to do next and that is uh, shift a add mesh plane hit s mm, 20 yeah and uh, we've just created a really large kind of plane for our uh, text to be on now if we just go into the blender game uh, and we go into the physics panel for this there will automatically be some physics applied to this ground even though we didn't put it put it there ourselves 
and you'll notice that the physics type is static. And that means that when we try and simulate an animation, this plane here, our ground, isn't going to move. But it is an object, so uh, all these other pieces aren't going to fall through it. They will land on it, like so. It's quite hard to see there. But uh, yeah, right there with the H, right at the end there. That's what we're looking for. So, um, I mean, it, it's looking a bit crazy at the moment. I'm just going to, which part of the H is that? Which is doing that crazy shivery thing. The main bulk. Okay. I'm just going to, last, last fracture, guys. Promise. And then just, yeah. Do that. Fracture. Shards. Okay. And uh, yeah, just by fracturing that one last time, I've actually made it so that, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not crazy anymore. It's actually falling apart as opposed to freaking out. So anyways, now uh, let's say we don't want the text to shatter until, um, I don't know, two seconds into the animation. So we'll, we'll just go into the render settings here. Um, Sorry, back into cycles just to see what our frame rate is, and it's 24. So uh, back into Blender game, two times 24, 48. So we're going to go to the 48th frame, and uh, right there we're going to go up to game, record animation, and hit P. Boom. And we'll just let it do its thing for a while, and then we'll press Escape, and go into Blender. Sorry, cycles render, and voila. If we click on this object here, which is part of the H, you'll see we have a whole bunch of keyframes which just came into it. And uh, if I scrub through the timeline, you'll notice as well we have um, all the different pieces falling apart. And this is what I meant by many uh, horizontal, you know, fractures. It's like it's been sliced apart like a piece of bread or something. And that is our fracturing text right there. Pretty cool, huh? So now that we've got our animation, which uh, we recorded in the Blender game, just to remind you of that, we're going to add some final touches to the scene. So, view, cameras, go into the active camera, click on this, just zoom in a bit, and just position it how you want it. I'm just gonna go with the same kind of layout that I had in the, you know, the nice and warm welcome message. And just move the plane over so there's no edges in the uh, in the sides of the frame. I mean, and then uh, we'll just hit Shift A, add another plane, move this up. Uh, normally, I would actually be naming these objects, but uh, today I'm just trying to make this tutorial real quick, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to do that. So just put this around about there, and uh, give it an emission material. And then just duplicate that, uh, GY, move it down, GX, move it across a bit. And we'll go into viewport shading rendered mode, just to see what this looks like. Uh, at the moment, these two lighting panels up here are, sh are sharing the same lighting material. So we'll just click on that, hit five. And we've got some basic lighting going on here, just to, you know, light the scene. So we'll... Uh, just recolor that slightly actually, give it a slightly warmer look. Kind of like how it was in the welcome message. And we'll just go into the world as well and turn that all the way down so there is no light coming from the well sky or anything like that. Uh, we just have this kind of yellowish lighting going on here. And uh, if we click on the plane, I think is, uh, I'm not really sure which plane we're clicked on at the moment because I haven't named them. And it turns out to be we're clicked on the ground. So just to toggle that, that is our ground. On this, I'm just going to add uh, mix shader material. Uh, just some really basic texturing stuff going on here. It's not really important. I've got past the important bit. Um, almost. Almost past the important bit. We'll just make that half diffuse, half glossy, and with the diffuse, we'll just make kind of bluish, so it contrasts light with the light. And uh, actually, there you have it. 
how to shatter text. It's surprisingly easy for something that took me several weeks how to figure out. Uh, all it took in the end was a, was a simple Google, and I had it in, in about five minutes after weeks of looking into it. Um, so yeah, here's our text, and we'll just do a few... Uh, I, think, I think I did quite well in that one, speaking in terms of timing. Uh, we'll just set the render to about 150. Uh, th that's the path tracing samples. Um, set the output. Let's just call it tutorial text shatter. And we'll just save that in the tutorials folder. Accept. No overwriting, please. QuickTime. Why not? 100 res. I'm not really sure how well that'll show up on YouTube, you know, YouTube being YouTube, but uh, yeah. So we'll just go into solid mode for one last moment. Go to the first frame and hit Alt A to uh, just preview our animation here. Lovely. A little bit slow, but hey. And actually, I think we'll just uh, set that to 24, so it's only one second that it has to start off at. Boom. Yeah, that's lovely. So there you go. That's how you shatter text. And uh, pretty soon, I imagine, I'll be experimenting more with what you can do with uh, text-shaped mesh layers, maybe in some particle dissolves or anything like that. Uh, so I'll just post this video, I think, uh, bookending the tutorial, so at the start, not the finish. And uh, I, I actually used uh, Blender to make a 3D title for the Ventry Ident. I've made a new Ventry Ident, which is uh, somewhere. I'll put it on the video. Thanks for watching. Um, enjoy your evenings. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye.